Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church Online. Welcome to our first Sunday of Advent. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And today is the day that we celebrate the new church year. We've always been waiting for 2021, joking about we can't wait for 2020 to end. Well, guess what? In the church year, that has come this glorious day. So let us join together in celebration and praise of worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this Advent, we're taking time to prepare ourselves for Christ's coming. And we'll be using this series for the next couple of weeks, pondering about ways in which um, we, we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christmas, for the coming of Christ. And for this week, it's pondering how, pondering how is it that we prepare ourselves for Christ? How, how did Mary do it? My goodness, finding out um, that a baby was coming. I mean, I don't know that she was prepared, so, uh, let us ponder how we can be prepared for the angel to show up to us. Let us join together in a confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive to sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted in Christ's peace, and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in prayer. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks the days of preparation for Christ's advent. Light one candle to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel. God fulfills the promise. the third chapter and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God in whatever you do in word or deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
According to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Christ. To you, Norman Rockwell lived in 19, or 1894 to 1978 and became famous for his paintings in a magazine called the Saturday Evening Post. And perhaps Rockwell's most iconic post painting, the father of a family is at the head of the dinner table about to carve the roast. The mother is wearing her unspoiled apron, beaming over the meal in elegance. The children gather dutifully around the table, smiling and rosy-cheeked. Rockwell's message? Well, this family's life is picture perfect. So when you think about your family, what comes to mind? It might be dad snoring on the couch while the TV is blasting away. Mom completely maxed out after another meal. The younger children fighting again over something. You know, the, the young son locked in his room playing games on the computer or maybe has the walls shaking to some sort of alien music. The older daughter, well, she's been on her phone so long, you wonder if the earbuds just are permanently attached to her ear. You know, the family, according to Norman Rockwell, well, it has no hassles, it has no headaches, you're never in hot water. But we all know a real family faces painful and perplexing predicaments. Say that a couple of times. I mean, the truth is we, loved ones die. Children, they make bad decisions. Parents, they get divorced. There is never enough money. And who's going to the nursing home this week to see grandpa? Now, Mary, the mother of Jesus, has to know the reality of how complex and not perfect family life can be even when God is interceding. Or maybe I should say in her case, because God is interceding. Our gospel lesson for today says nothing is impossible with our God. That is what the angel Gabriel tells Mary. So Gabriel tells Mary that she's going to have a son, but this is not any ordinary kind of son. He will be great and he'll be called the, the son of the most high. 
and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Can you imagine? So Mary was probably like 13 years old. We're guessing Joseph somewhere around 20. So she's talking to her fiance. You know, he's busy, let's say, making the floor pans and the wall colors. Mary comes in and interrupts. Joseph, I need you to sit down. We have to talk. Joseph, honey, I'm pregnant. I mean, mind-blowing explosion. Hello, real life. Right there. Well, what are your options? when everything literally looks impossible because this is impossible. There is just no way. So number one, you close the door. That That's absolutely an option. And it's usually our first one we choose. And even in scripture, we get to experience Joseph doing just that. He plans to divorce her. Now we know that he doesn't end up divorcing her, right? Because God again intercedes and some amazing things happen. But that is his initial plan. His initial plan is to close that door. And when things happen in our life, when things are coming our way that are unexpected, that we feel like we can't handle, sometimes we also just want to close the door. Now, another option when everything seems impossible is to literally slam the door. Now, this can feel good. Never is actually good. This is when we're dropping the verbal bombs. We rant, we rave, we have tempers, and we throw tantrums, and we just begin to fight like cats and dogs. Another way we handle this is we totally withdraw. You know, this is so broken, I'm done, so sensitive, so intense, so explosive. This time, I'm not slamming the door, I'm not closing the door. We are going to lock the door and throw that key away. So these are ways we come at things. We close the door, we slam the door, we walk, lock the door, but there actually is another option. We can open the door. Opening a door in the midst of conflict is difficult and really makes us lean into God's help. Gabriel says those words to Mary. Nothing is impossible with our God and empowered by this promise. Mary says, I am the servant of the Lord and let it be to me according to your word, God. Leaning in with all of herself. I mean, how many of us really love that song, Here I Am, Lord? Those are some of the most serious lean-in words. And we like that song, Here I Am, Lord. It is I, Lord. You know, Martin Luther teaches us to say that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. So I can't on my own, with my own reason, with my own strength. What do I do? I close doors, I slam doors, and I lock them. And Luther continues, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, by the good news, by Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit has called me. And so we can hear those words of the angels. Nothing is impossible with our God. So in this time of Advent, as we're getting ready for Christmas, as we are getting ready for the coming of Christ, one way we can prepare for Christ is to ponder what doors can we be opening God delivers his word to us through Jesus and through scripture so that we can look at our spouses and our children and our friends and we can open the door. In the last book, The Chronicles of Narnia, and the book titled The Last Battle, C.S. Lewis describes his characters facing the mother of all battles. And they come to a door. And some claim that behind the door was just this life-threatening monster. However, once through the door, 
they stood on green grass with a, a deep blue sky overhead and the air blew gently on their faces like that of a day in early summer. And they continued to go further and further in, making wonderful discoveries. So why talk about this? Because I want to encourage you to open that ominous door, whatever it is in your life. Just like Mary, open your heart, open your ears, and open your life to God's word, the Holy Spirit at work in your life. May you fling open wide the door and find yourself standing on green grass with the deep blue sky overhead and the air blowing gently on your face like that of a day in early summer. Because people of God, nothing is impossible with our God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we have a lot in common with Mary. 
When we consider the enormity of the promises you have made accompanying the birth of Jesus, we also ask, how will this be? To which you answer back in your word, nothing, nothing is, is impossible, impossible with our God. God. Father, every promise you have made about Jesus and our redemption, purchased through his shed blood and empty tomb, will happen. Indeed, your great and glorious promises are always yes and amen. And so we confess, nothing, nothing is impossible, impossible with our God. Jesus, on your second advent, you will finish making all things new, changing this sinful and dying world into the new Jerusalem. This promise is so overwhelming that you remind us that nothing Pain is, is impossible with our God. God. Father, heal the pain in our families, especially that of Tom, Sue, Corey, Trent, Victor, Tom, Andrew, Ben, Lonnie, Rick, Hank, Paula, Len, Bev, Jeanette, Lorraine, Bill, Ashley, Sarah, Keith, Marilyn, John, Patty Jo, Janice, and Ted. Restore unity, release compassion and kindness, and let the love of Jesus pervade and permeate our homes. We believe that nothing, nothing is, is impossible with our God. Father, through your Holy Spirit, empower us to think of others more often than ourselves, not to keep a record of wrongs and no longer rehearse the ways others have hurt us and the ways we've hurt them. Remind us again that nothing, nothing is, is impossible, impossible with our God. God. And so we say with Mary, we are your servants, Lord. Let it be to us according to your word. We pray in Jesus' glorious and grace-filled name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in darkness and in light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. And in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit to come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, 
word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Joined into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I hope to see you at church in a few, uh, but if not, know that the presence of God knows no boundaries, and God is with you and God is in you. Now I invite you to open up your hearts to receive a blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.